أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم أتي الله أتي الرسول أولى الأمر منكم أنا أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم Miskeen al zalim al jahal <coughs> but for the grace of Allah that we're still in existence. Alhamdulillah that Allah granted us to enter in the holy month of Rabbil Awal and the birth month of Sayyidina Muhammad and the immense realities of this birth of light and our existence. Ta'seen tilka ayatul Qur'an wal kitab al mubeen and that Alhamdulillah for the hearts of awliyaullah coming and emitting from the heart of Sayyidina Muhammad the immense purities of the reality of that Divine Fire in which all whom are around it and enter it become blessed by the virtue of the presence of the reality of that fire. That fire is the heart of Sayyidina Muhammad the location in which the Holy Qur'an is transmitting and emitting and this is the holy speech of Allah's Divinely Presence. Something can't be understood, can't be phantom but to know that it's immensely blessed. And Allah made it a, a great struggle for all other nations but for the nation of Sayyidina Muhammad it's but one salawat away. As soon as we mention, Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala Ali Sayyidina Muhammad Allah sends our soul into the immense reality and the reality is transmitting ten lights back to us in a dimension in which there is no time, the world of light has no time. So Prophet teaching that, as soon as you greet me once Allah allows my soul to greet you ten times. And this fire is greeting you because now we're understanding what that salawat from Prophet to us is. As Nabi Musa was trying to achieve that and in one audience he entered into that flame, that flame gave nine immense miracles that brought down the entire Pharaonic kingdom. As Salaamu Alaikum Warahmatullahi Wabarakatuh This is Shaykh Nur John, thank you for watching the video that you're watching. InshaAllah if you're happy with the content and happy with these programs, please support the button below the programs that we have for our orphanage repairs, our water well, give the gift of life, our mobile food vans. We have now five vans, Vancouver, Chicago, Los Angeles, Pakistan. There's many programs that reach thousands of people and rescue foods and give those supplies to people in need. Your support is greatly appreciated. Also, be so kind as to leave uh, loving comments and please share the stream, every bit counts. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. One audience and Allah gives to us anybody whom wishes to be in the presence of Prophet and now they're understanding what that is. That is the Kitab al Mubeen. And from the heart of that light is a sign of Holy Qur'an. That reality of Taseen and the transmission and the Divinely speech of Allah Means with one durood the Sharif, Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala ali Sayyidina Muhammad. We enter with our soul into that presence, and that fire gives ten praisings back onto our reality. So, Muslim people of tafakkur contemplate. That what that fire said to Sayyidina Musa and Allah 
because what Allah described of Prophet who he had a Qur'an, he does not speak from his desires and that any speech is a revelation. Because Allah clarifying for believers that the heart of Allah the heart of Prophet is the speech of Allah speaking to you. So then who's giving back the ten salawats upon your soul? La ilaha illallah, la ilaha illallah. The one whom spoke to Nabi Musa salam, saying, An Allah and the mighty and the all wise is the source of all power, all majesty. And Allah made for the believers of the nation of Sayyidina Muhammad enter that fire and all you need is one salawat upon Sayyidina Muhammad If the nation knew the extent and the power of Wandarul Sharif, they would be sitting making tens of thousands of Durud Sharif. Job is to make people heedless. This is the immensity of that power. When they sit and sit and, and say, Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala ali Sayyidina Muhammad, they sit for majlis as salli ala Nabi their soul is entering into that fire, all whom are around it are blessed, all whom enter within it become blessed. And the Divinely speech of Allah is speaking to them. And Allah's Divinely speech dresses the soul and blesses the soul. This is all that is necessary for humanity. This is the way to draw near to that reality. That becomes the immensity of Durud Sharif. When a nation is in need, they make salawat on Sayyidina Muhammad. When they have fear, they make salawat upon Sayyidina Muhammad. This becomes the secret of drawing near, which you see the nation lacking now. When they make their call, it's not Durud al-Sharif upon Sayyidina Muhammad They call directly to Allah They left out the portal, they left out their greatest means into Divinely Presence. They left out the greatest gift from the Divinely Presence. The greatest mediator, the one whom takes your case and brings resolution and representation from Allah You don't hear them making salawat. Imagine a nation that every time they face the difficulty or fear they began majlis as Salli Ala Nabi The fire would be all around them and they would enter into that Divinely flame because the flame would be present with them. Allah would be present with them. That would be a nation with immense power. This is the key and the power for the nation. Every time a difficulty comes, observe and say, why don't they mention Prophet Why don't they keep the sunnah of Prophet Because these are the keys of this reality. The ones whom 
studying from this reality they understand the immensity of Allah's gift and blessings. Other nations their prayers were to receive an audience and the nation of Sayyidina Muhammad has such a simple entry. So simple that they don't give a value that it deserves and that's the, the dangers of the last days and the reward for those whom Allah have blessed to grant them ears to hear and eyes to see. And they come upon these haqqaiqs and these realities and they say, make it simple. There can be nothing more simpler than making your salawat upon Prophet Because of the immensity of that proximity and the immensity of that light, then we understand hold tight to your rope. When they say, don't cut your anchor, don't cut your rope. Understand that the conditions that Allah has put us in has a hikmah and a wisdom because as you enter into that flame everything about us is screaming to get out of that presence. But people don't have an ear to hear. Imagine that with your soul you make your duru the sharif, you're moving into that reality. But your shaitan is burning, your nafs is burning. All of their hopes and <coughs> desires for you that you would be their slave and you would be their toy, they're burning. Hence they send 10,000 waswases into your ear to get out, get out. Because Allah is telling you, this flame all whom are round it, all whom are in it are blessed. That same flame burns the shayateen, burns the nafs and that's why they teach, hold your anchor. Things are about to get pretty bad and everything you think you're smart, it's not you that's smart, it's your nafs telling you get out of the fire. If you can't stand the heat get out of the what they call kitchen, huh? that's what the nafs wants you to do, just leave, run, get a new job, get a new life, get a new appearance. Do something but the people are taught to meditate and contemplate. The reason the nafs is, is yelling and screaming every type of complaint, every type of difficulty, complain, 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 complain until the person is so annoyed with the conditions of their life that they're trying to pull away and they don't even know that they're pulling away. And this is because of the intensity of that fire that we're entering. And we said that you listen to the naat and the poetry of these ashaqeen in which they describe that a moth to the flame. Your life is to be a moth to the flame. Is that the fire is there, it's very clear it is the presence of Prophet Enter it with your salawats, with your good deeds and good character. And as you enter into that flame know that your, your whisperings will be intensified because they're burning. If they have too much reach into you, you see like a sci-fi movie, if the devil's too strong with you, he has claws into your body. And as you draw near into that flame he pushes deeper to create a pain and a resistance. When Prophet describes to, to the holy companions who fought massive battles some two times a day, 
that these were minor fights. I'm leaving this world veiling myself, what comes after is the Jihad al-Akbar. People don't seem to really contemplate what that meant to tell holy companions whom they saw nothing but fighting for the sake of Prophet that the greater fight lies ahead. So as soon as people have difficulty they think they should run from it. As soon as they have a condition they're not happy with they should complain about it. And if shaitan grabs you and sticks his nails into you, you think you're going to run from it. But this was supposed to be the great fight. He didn't say it was going to be easy. He didn't say that you're just going to declare your Islam and you'll be victorious. But that it's an immense battle. So those whom are suffering from difficulties that the shaitan doesn't want to leave them alone. This is all from the talk from the night before because people don't seem to see how that's useful in everyday life. When you want to cut the chain and gnaw away at, at your anchor, trying to lift your anchor out because a certain condition in your life is, is not comfortable for you. Instead of worrying about how to change that condition, asking for prayers that this is this, this is hard, this is hard. Why don't you focus on why that condition is there? If a shaitan is attacking you, the relief is not only in asking the shaykh's du'a, the relief is in learning how to fight that devil. You, 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 what is the shaykh supposed to do for you? Give all the tools for you but he can't take your path for you. He gave all the tools for you then why you don't make your connection stronger, make your focus more clear, make your durood and your salawats stronger. Means go back through all your practices. So we give now analogy, you're taught all these lessons. You sit in your house and a shaitan came right through your door or through a window. Say, cool the shaykh, shaitans are coming through my window. And okay, now what? But he gave the tools for you to keep looking at your house and your heart because the house is, is synonymous with the heart. That what's wrong in your house? Oh, maybe the windows are not secure, maybe my door is not secure, maybe the, the system around the house doesn't have enough lights, it's too dark in one corner some shaitan could be playing there. As an analogy they keep inspecting their premises because they've been taught the rijah. They're not looking for, for babysitting, we're not looking for someone to take our path, we want to be taught how to fight on our path. So every time a difficulty comes the believer sits and contemplates, how I got attacked, how this energy is coming towards me. How is this difficulty happening? My connection has to be stronger. So, oh, I thought it's very strong. Well, apparently not. It has to be stronger. All of the teaching has to be understood. All the drink, the food, everything has to be with du'a, cut out anything suspicious. All of these practices, you live the life like a shaykh. They showed a Muslim president, pious one, sitting in an event and somebody brought something for him to drink. He looked at the person bringing it, he didn't touch it. As soon as he saw his son come then he took the cup and drank it. Means he's vigilant that someone may try to poison him, don't be heedless in life. So means in our life, in our every day you watch what you eat, you watch what you drink, you watch all your practices and all your energy, all your… everything that we're taking in in our lives 
has to produce a positive energy. We're not talking about being poisoned, these are analogies. That look a, a, a dunya president who's pious, how much they're vigilant. But normal people in training are heedless. So means every type of condition Allah puts us in, there must be a hikmah. There must be a hikmah that something's coming through and energy is coming through. This condition that I'm in, it should be drawing me closer to the shaykh and to the reality of the shaykh. Instead of me trying to find a relief that actually may make me be distant from the shaykh, maybe the condition Allah put me draws me near to the shaykh. And in the concept of drawing near to the shaykh, it's not that you be down the street from where his physical presence, it's not necessary because his physical presence doesn't give anything to you. We said before the people who come to the physical presence they can become handicapped thinking that they achieve something special. The people of Mecca they don't make hajj, literally they live in Mecca and they rarely go for hajj, rarely go for umrah because they think it's… they already got it. This is not about physical presence. When they say, draw near to the shaykh is that your heart and your soul has to be connected and your soul has to be witnessing. And that can be achieved by distance because of the reality of yearning. You know Ashiqeen they're all outside of Medina. Prophet's great nuclear force pushes their force away because they have a lesser nuclear force. It was for their wujud they would have sold everything and moved into Medina to Munawwara and let everything collapse and just be in the presence of Prophet but because of his immense power he pushes them away and as a result they're able to serve the nation but they exist with an immense yearning within their being to be with the one whom they love most and more dear to themselves. So it's not that everybody has the immense love, they sell everything and move into Medina to Munawwara but those whom are in service to His Majesty they're kept at a distance. And the hikmah of that distance is that their soul has an immense yearning and because of that distance they have an immense himma. And because of that distance they have to accomplish so that they can have His holy nazar. So they put on big events, they put on big charities, they do grand things. Why? So that His Holy Majesty will look upon them. Don't you sit at His feet and, and do nothing in life? So what are you doing there? Nothing. The whole reality and hikmah is that they were to go out and compete to do things to get the nazar of Prophet So may alhamdulillah we explain now the whole process in just a few minutes. We pray that Allah give us a greater understanding and a connection to this world of light and a very strong connection into the world of light as the world is unfolding in the directions that is foretold to unfold. InshaAllah Subhanahu wa rabbika rabbal izzat amma yasifoon wa salaamu ala al-mursaleen wa alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen wa hurmati Muhammad al-Mustafa wa siri Surat al-Fatiha. As Salaamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. This is Shaykh Narjan, thank you for watching the video that you're watching. InshaAllah if you're happy with the content and happy with these programs, please support the button below the programs that we have for our orphanage repairs our water well, give the gift of life, our mobile food vans, we have now five vans, Vancouver, Chicago, Los Angeles, Pakistan. There's many programs that reach thousands of people and rescue foods and give those supplies to people in need. Your support is greatly appreciated. Also, 
be so kind as to leave uh, loving comments and please share the stream. Every bit counts. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.